All right, well, I'm going to do a video here showing you guys how I've been tuning this bike, my uh, 2018 Indian Springfield. I've got my DinoJet PV3 here, and uh, this cable I'm plugging it into, it's routed up under the seat and everything, or I would... Uh, show you guys where it plugs in but beside behind this side cover is your uh i don't know if they call it an obd port on these bikes or not but that's basically what it is that's the diagnostic port but um siri but uh yeah your pv3 plugs into the diagnostic port um if you have the DinoJet wideband kit, the wideband will plug in there, and then the PV3 plugs into the wideband. Um, I do have the wideband on this bike. But once you have a tune to put on it, turn the ignition on, and your uh, DinoJet will come on, your PV3. And uh, hit this rectangle button here, and you'll go to flash tune, or actually show you how to to get the tune off of it you come here to read ECU and that'll pull the tune off of the vehicle whether it's a bike side by side whatever you're using a PV3 to tune <clears throat> and once you have your new tune to flash onto it you come to flash tune hit that and you look for the tune you're gonna flash so I have 36 on the bike now. The one you're currently running will always show up first. And you're looking for these files that end in DJT. This STK, that is the stock file for the bike. But this PP037 DJT, that's Power in the Prairie Lands 037. So hit your square button on that. It'll give you some information, Power, Prairie Power, Stage 3 Hanson Cams, Trash 2 into 1 Exhaust is what we have this one described as, and uh, press square button to start ECU flash. Flash ECU with selected tune file, you can either continue or return, we want to continue, and it'll go through flashing the tune, it'll show you initializing and all that your headlights will do some weird stuff and you'll get flashing lights all over the instrument cluster and everything but it'll go through initialize it'll erase the old tune and then it writes the new tune to the bike so uh once that gets all done we will uh come back and i will show you guys how to data log so you can uh get a new tune going so yeah, as soon as that gets done, we will be back. <clears throat> okay, uh, now it says flash complete. To verify flash, turn key off, then on. So, you don't have a key on this bike, but what's that, what that's saying is just cycle the ignition. So you turn the ignition off, turn it back on, and you're ready to go. <laughs> um, one thing, I don't know if all vehicles do this, but this uh, Springfield always says low fuel right after you flash a tune and then the gauge will come up to uh, where it should be so just uh, something I've noticed about this so now <coughs> you can fire the bike up and uh, go for a little ride uh, really helps if you uh, put the kickstand up before you put it in gear
No, I did not check my tire pressure. Yes, I know it's low. The front is at 34 pounds. But, uh, basically you want to come out and uh, get the bike up to operating temperature. Um, there's two times that you don't want to data log even if the bike or you want to make sure the bike's up to temperature so at least 160 170 degrees on your engine temp there <clears throat> and then you don't want to data log uh, basically within the first 30 seconds of uh, the engine running because uh, the bikes are going through all the different tables and everything just trying to get everything started so you'll just get a bunch of bad information if you start data logging right away um, there are certain times like when you're if you're having trouble on startup you will need to mess with those parts of the tables but can't really trust any information you're getting out of the ECU right then. Um, your O2 sensors will be giving you a good reading, so you can go in and look at that, but the ECU is doing so many things right when the vehicle starts that you really just get a bunch of, not really bad information, but it doesn't really tell you anything, if that makes sense. But, yeah, basically just go right around, don't really ride the piss out of it never good to do that to a cold vehicle whether it's car bike truck whatever uh, let it come up to temperature and uh yeah so once i get the bike up to temperature and ready to log then i will uh we'll be back i guess <coughs> okay now I've got the bike up to uh, 200 degrees, so uh, we're going to go ahead and start the log to do that. You hit this uh, circle button here, so it says data logging is started. Um, basically, when you first start out, you don't want to just go balls out with it. You want to kind of ease in, just get the lower parts of the table tuned in. So, just... Uh, Curves around, some like part throttle pulls, nothing too aggressive. Um, and you want to just work your way up to tuning the top end of the bike. So, um, I've got quite a few tunes on this. This is tune 37 going on the bike. So, If you've looked at the fuel tables, or not really fuel tables on this, it's a V table, volumetric efficiency. Um, if you've looked at that, you can see all the different cells on the table. And you're just trying to hit as many of those cells as possible. So RPM and load is basically, or RPM and um, parametric pressure is what that goes off of. Typically, so you just want to ride the bike different RPMs. You don't want to just go out and cruise around at 2,000 RPMs for 20 minutes and tune off of that because then your bike's going to run really good at 2,000 RPMs, but it's not going to know what the hell to do anywhere else. So you want to vary it a little bit. You want to get some low RPM stuff, a little bit higher. Like I said, starting out, you don't want to just go out there and the things years back and run the piss out of it because you want to ease into it. Jesus, Siri is being a dickhead today. But, um, so, just find some good roads that'll uh, have you shifting quite a bit 
and uh, one good thing for low RPM stuff, especially like low RPM with a lot of load on it to really keep it in a cell for a little bit, find some hills. Um, just the longer you can stay in each cell, the more information you're going to get for that cell. So find some hills, put some more weight on the bike, whatever you can do. Uh, Get one of your buddies to hop on the back seat. That's what Andrew and Dwayne do. <clears throat> but yeah, you just want to ride around, just get some information. Uh, so you can look at that and whatever you're using to tune, whether you're doing it manually or whether you're using something like uh, Dwayne's website, uh, Custom Cycle Tuning, which I will be showing in this video. I don't know how soon, if ever, that website is going to be, like, actually public. Um, honestly, I hope it's soon because it is such a great resource for people wanting to tune their own bike. Um, but that's... It's only Dwayne working on this as far as I know. Um, I'm trying to help him out with some stuff for some new tuning things I'm going to be working on on this bike. Uh, HP Tuners just announced support, so we're trying to get going on that. Um, but, yeah. Basically, your data log, just right around. Don't just do the same thing the whole time. You want to be in different gears. Higher RPM, lower RPM. I'm just rambling at this point. Um, but, yeah, so, we'll, uh, have a few clips of me doing some polls just to, uh, kind of make this video less boring. Um, if anyone's wondering, this headlight on my bike is a Baja Designs LP6. Uh, this is low beam with no driving lights. That is the high beam. Um, this headlight is absolutely insane. It's the best thing. I don't know how I ever rode at night without one of these on the bike. Um, it is so great. Currently, there isn't a kit to put this headlight on the Springfield. I am working on one that will all be just bolt on, plug and play. You'll have to pull the tank to run uh, two wires to the battery. But other than that, it'll be just throw it on and go. Well, let's see how good we can light up the lake. a lot of bugs. My favorite time of year to ride. It is just beautiful out. Nine o'clock basically. Still warm enough. You can just wear a t-shirt, but it's not hot enough. You're sweating. It's just beautiful. thing I should point out um, this bike pops a lot under diesel I don't mind it I kind of like it but uh, one thing I was told by Andrew and Dwayne if you want to tune that out run it real high up in the RPM range and then instead of just letting the throttle snap shut just roll off of it and just like kind of follow the RPMs down with your throttle 
and that'll give it the information it needs in those cells to uh, just have the proper fueling. Um, I like the pops and bangs and stuff, so I'm not going to worry about doing that. Do I pass this boater? Yeah, we're going to do that. back to high beams and that's with the driving lights. Driving lights are just some LED. I think they're actually from the Indian dealership. I think just the driving lights Indian sells. But they are LED. I am planning on swapping them out to either Baja Design Squadron lights or LP4 lights. It just kind of depends on if the LP4s will fit and not look ridiculous. Um, because, I mean, I do want this bike to look good. And it would look good having all the lights on the front of the bike kind of match, be the same style. Um, but we'll just have to see. See if I can get them to fit in the buckets there. There will probably be two versions of this video. Uh, one version just... Uh, just the tuning information and the other one probably have a little bit more of my rambling because the main reason I'm doing this is to get a video up for Dwayne and Andrew to uh, send to people who are asking what they need to do to tune their bikes. Um, and if this is the first video of ours you've seen, you don't know who Dwayne and Andrew are. Andrew runs Always Broke Custom Cycles. Dwayne works with Andrew there on stuff, and he runs the website Custom Cycle Tuning. Um, really great guys. Andrew does amazing work. He's the one that did the 116 Big Four kit and Hanson cams. been a few hours so hopefully he's moved on found somewhere else to sit honestly I'm surprised we haven't gotten flashed yet because of these this headlight every time I have this bike out at night it seems like everyone flashes me which I understand it is really bright kind of obnoxious but riding around out here on these roads with all the deer and stuff that run around I don't give a shit I'm gonna see what's coming up out of the ditches
this tune must be getting pretty close because normally by now I have a flashing check engine light for a random miss. Just from the tooling meter tooling. The um, fueling being so far off, the volumetric efficiency. But, oh, there it is. I just had to say something and jinx myself, didn't I? Check engine light being on for the data log shouldn't really affect anything. Um, just annoy the piss out of you anytime you look down, but other than that, it should be fine. Um, <sighs> but misfire is something that doesn't go away then obviously pull the damn bike over get someone to haul it home for you but I can tell my bike it stumbled a little bit coming up that hill trying to go slow in six gear just because I don't have the tune dialed in good enough down low and that was also pretty slow for these cams so Time limit on a data log is 30 minutes. That's how long one file can be. Um, if you go over, it will start a new file. So there is a timer. It will show you in the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but the uh, top left corner there says uh, three minutes and seven seconds right now is how long I've been data logging. That's really 33 minutes and seven seconds because uh, I hit that 30 minute limit and it restarted on me. Um, and that, that doesn't matter, that's completely fine. It's not gonna mess anything up. It's just, if you want to use information from both data logs, then you'll have two data logs to either open and look at or two data logs to upload to 
custom cycle tuning. Um, but I think from here, I'm just going to cruise back home. And uh, I will show you guys how to upload these data log files to Dwayne's website and um, get a new tune. And then I will also take the tune that's currently on the bike and the new tune both into the PowerCore software and uh, compare them to show you what exactly it changed. So, man, there's a lot of deer out tonight. But, uh, yeah, I will see you guys back at the shop. the uh, combustion industries mirror flip kit on this bike and uh, I really like the look of it the actual like part itself it's kind of ugly looking but like it's kind of the best you can do and it just flips the uh, factory mirrors upside down um, my uh, throttle hand mirror is just completely loose because the bolt up top here backed out so I will have to tighten that when I get back back home thing about these headlights which I'm sure the camera is picking up is the uh, glare you get coming back at you from all the uh, like road signs um, that can get kind of blinding when you're running the high beams sometimes but other than that I have absolutely no complaints about this light it is just amazing um, they're kind of expensive but for the light you're, you get, it's totally worth it. on this mirror is getting real old real quick. Ah, fuck 
it. There's barely ever any traffic on this road. And I can get rid of this annoying ass check engine light too. Camera's still plugged in. Turn my hazards on so I don't get runned over. Dig through all my junk in my saddle bag. Hey, that's the mirror off my soft tail. I don't have great luck with mirrors on motorcycles, apparently. They all try to fall off on me. Huh. Looks about like uh, that one. Yep, eight millimeter. So let's bring this out. Oh, right there. As far as it can go. Okay, snug that one up. Uh, snug that one up. Okay, once you get done, to unplug this. Okay, push a little tab on the back of the plug, and this will come out. And then uh, come over here, and you will plug it into your computer. And uh, we'll get the computer going, and we will do the rest of it on there. Okay, so you got your data log done, and it's time to tune. There's two ways you can go about it. You can open it in the DinoJet software, which I haven't really done, so I'm not going to be that knowledgeable on that side of it. Or um, my friend, friend of the channel, friend of Andrew that built my bike, uh, Dwayne, built this uh, website that i use he gave me access to um it's not quite ready to be public yet still work in progress and uh things will change about it but i'm going to show how this website works so it's uh customcycletuning.com there is a link in the uh, description of this video um when this goes live or this website goes live um, but you log in, you've logged in before, I think it automatically saves your, uh, information and, uh, vehicles here. When you add a vehicle, you have to type in a name for it. Uh, VIN number, he told me it doesn't really matter, but you do have to select the make and model. So right now it's just Can-Ams, Harleys, and Indians. So I haven't looked at the Harley part of it. Oh, Can ECM models. What about can am? What can you do for can am? Oh, just spiders. Okay. Uh, Dwayne's wife, Kim, rides a spider. 
But if you're watching our channel, odds are maybe you ride an Indian. So you got the Thunderstroke bikes, Scouts, and FTR. Um, and that's basically all the bikes that Dino Jet will tune. Um, the 2014 to 2020 bikes that have the MY17 ECU. Um, the newer bikes, there isn't really a great way to tune them right now. Um, there's like you have Lloyd's and the other shops that can do a uh, tune on them, but it's it's not the same really. And then after you select your model and everything, put a name for the bike in, all that stuff, uh, you upload your stock file. So when you pull the files off of the ECU on the bike, they will get put onto your uh, DinoJet. So you have your DinoJet connected to the computer. You go to it in this little window here. And um, it'll just say right here under type DinoJet stock file. So pretty easy. Um, I've already done that for this bike, so we're just going to cancel out of this. But Darth Vader is what my dad calls my Springfield. So it brings you to this page. Uh, you can come in here and change your uh, motor configuration, the tune file names. Um, then you have a uh, options for what intake is on the bike so you can do stock stage one high flow uh what throttle body you have whether it's the 54 or the 60 millimeter uh what fuel injectors you're running whether it's the stock 280s or if you've upgraded um what cams you've got so these are all basically all the cams available for a uh Thunderstroke bike. Um, a lot of these I couldn't find when I was looking for cams. So there, there's a list. These guys know a lot more about this stuff than I do. Um, Dwayne is actually running a set of Andrews 570s, I believe, in his bike right now. And uh, that bike will run. I have the Hanson 650s. So we'll just keep those selected. Uh, what kind of exhaust do you have? Stock. Stage one slip ons, high flow, true duels, two into one. I've got the Trask Assault two into one. O2 sensors, you can have just stock narrow bands, you can have just wide bands, or you can have both. I have both. Cats removed, there's no cat in the uh, Trask two into one. Air compressor. <laughs> Okay, compressor's off. Um, and then if you have a quick shifter on the bike, I do have a quick shifter. If you don't have a quick shifter, get a quick shifter. Best thing ever. Um, but I didn't need to make any changes in here. I was just showing it to you guys, so I'm just going to cancel out of it. Um, tune summary, that will show you what was changed on the last tune. So, uh, well, it'll show you summary of your last data log that you uploaded so speed rpm duty cycles front and rear uh, cylinder temperature and engine load it will give you an average and a maximum of each of those so you can see my uh maximum injector duty cycle 79 on the front 75 on the rear so i'm pretty good on my fuel injectors i don't need to go up another size um and then down here it shows you what actually changed with the tune. So your volumetric efficiency, injector pulse width, front and rear, and injector compensation, front and rear. Um, it gives you a percentage of the cells on the table changed, an average change, and a maximum change. Um, and then you can look at a graph. And I don't know for sure, uh, Dwayne, if you're watching this, if you could leave a comment. Um, this graph, is that just showing the change or does that show what the actual table looks like? Um, cause the, the table, when I open it up in, uh, um, 
the dino jet power core doesn't quite look like that. At least I hope not. <laughs> so I'm thinking that's just the uh, just the changes that were made, graphed out. Um, but yeah, just really easy. Nothing at all hard to understand. Um, I mean, Dwayne has really made this just really, really simple to use. Um, uploading your log files. It says drop files here to upload. You can either just drag your files there and drop them, or you can click on that box and it'll pull up a window. And uh, your log files will always have the uh, tune name and then log and then whatever log that is. So like 36 log 1... Thir er, 36 log 1 dash 2. That's log 1 went over the 30 minute time limit and it started a second log. And then there's 36 log 2, 2 dash 2, 37 log 1, 37 log 1 dash 2. So those two are the ones I'm going to upload. And um, they'll just upload on the uh, website here. And then It'll say processing, and once it's done processing, it'll say done. Um, while we're waiting on these to process, this right here. The cams you have selected have cam overlap. Do you want to ignore the areas where that can cause false AFR readings? Um, overlap in a camshaft is when it has both the intake and exhaust valves open at the same time. Um, what that can cause, or there's a few things that can cause. Um, I don't know what the first one's called, but it's basically, it's an effect of scavenging in the exhaust. So your, um, your air fuel mixture coming in will actually flow directly through the cylinder and out the exhaust valve. And uh, that's not good because it'll give you bad readings on your uh, wideband gauge or the just widebands that show up on your uh, Dino jet, um, or narrow bands, really, either one. It'll throw off your O2 sensors. Or um, it can cause reversion, which is um, gases going back out through the uh, intake, which is also not good. Cause backfires and bad stuff. But you can control that pretty well with timing and just having your tune right. Um, this setting, when you first start tuning, if you get this option, go ahead and leave it off. Just say, I think it's no use all readings. Um, that will go ahead and get the uh, bottom of your VE table kind of filled in. And this, uh, this website, it doesn't make too aggressive of changes. Um, it just kind of sneaks up on where the tune needs to be. So this isn't just a go out data log at one time, get a tune and you're good. Bike runs great. It's, you got to do it a few times. I'm getting ready to get the uh, 37th one or 38th one. Um, but my tune down there is dialed in. Once the bike starts feeling good, down low, go ahead and change this to yes, ignore affected areas. Then uh, once both your data logs here say done, just hit submit section or session. Um, what we're waiting for is you should get an email from the website telling you. Um, I haven't been, I don't know, or I, I don't think I have been. Maybe they're going to my spam filter. I'm not sure, but I'm um, waiting on this to turn to a 38. Then uh, we'll be back when that turns into a 38, I guess. Okay, we got a 38 here, so we're going to download that. And uh, tune files are real small, so they download quick. And you're just going to copy that to your uh, PV3. So you still need your PV3 connected. Um, I'm doing that on my second screen. 
because I don't know if there's anything I need to not show in my files, but better safe than sorry. Okay, and uh, we're going to go ahead and open the uh, new tune file and the old tune file so we can see what the difference is. See what the website changed actually. And while we're waiting on that launch, we can uh, pull up the tune summary. <sighs> okay, so 74 and 65 max duty cycles. Those are real lopsided. Huh. Is that just a flow thing, Dwayne, or? Huh. Then, um, let's see what all it changed. Wow, it made some pretty big changes on volumetric efficiency. So yeah, it definitely looks like this is more just showing what changed. And uh, you can see through the middle here, like it's changing a little bit, but it's nothing too crazy. But uh, out here, that's uh, getting pretty aggressive with changes. So we will uh, power core. Yeah. Okay, that just doesn't seem right. That's got to be another thing where the cam overlap is kind of getting to it. Because just that one cell being way out there like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, because it should be a pretty gradual... gradual change through the uh, map. You shouldn't see any just giant fucking mountains out of nowhere, basically. But what we can do, open open the last file, too. And then you can right-click and compare the new files to so 38. That's what I've got, to the old file, 37. And this will show you what the changes that were made were. So that's that's where all the changes were. That's where I was writing, basically. And... <laughs> That's basically all I really know how to say. Or not know how to say. No to say. Um, I'm going to be switching to HB tuners instead of uh, continuing on with uh, DinoJet software. But if I were going to stay with this DinoJet software, I would come in and smooth this out. Because you see this like 62, 63, this 58 that are in here surrounded by 100s and 80s and all that stuff. So you'd want to bump those up because obviously it's making changes in here, but it hasn't made any changes over here. So that's obviously not flowing too much. This seems just way over the top. So I'd probably bring that down, bring some of the cells around it up. And just kind of smooth the table out a little bit. Um, but yeah, after this, I'm going to copy most of this table over, maybe the whole table, um, to the HP Tuner software. And uh, 
a few other tables that match up in the two. And we will be going through what it takes to get that Indian running on HP tuners. Um, I'm going to start on that tonight and hopefully get to work on it most of the day tomorrow. And uh, hopefully get it dialed in. Because uh, it's a lot of cool stuff. So hope you guys like this video. Hope you learned something. Um, I know I learned a lot working with uh, Dwayne and Andrew. Not really working with them. Standing around watching them work. <clears throat> And uh, just going through tuning this bike and having Dwayne help me. Um, he's been a big help. And um, even if you can't access the uh, actual tuning part of his website, there is um, this uh, Brain Bits section, which is pretty cool. Um, it's just stuff that he wished he knew when he started tuning. So there's stuff about... Uh, you got terminology, which is just like what stuff means. Then he's got air fuel ratio, volumetric efficiency, um, how to read an AFR, how to do your narrowband tuning, <coughs> uh, the math to do, volumetric efficiency, and then adjusting fuel injectors. Um, so there's stuff there that you can learn. Um, Yeah, so definitely keep an eye on this website because once it does go live, it should be just an absolutely amazing tool for anyone trying to tune their own bike. And I'm going to be working with Dwayne on this, trying to figure out how to get it to handle the HP tuners software too. Um, Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Um, hope you guys can go get your bikes running good. Um, subscribe if you want to. We're trying to do a lot of different videos and get some stuff out. One, just entertainment, and two, to maybe help people try to learn stuff. And uh, yeah. I get real awkward standing here just talking to a camera, so I'm going to go talk to a different camera for a while.